Physical science, John. Physical science. Thanks, Justice. We had just done some bell work on the board for those of you who are just tuning in, as it were. <laughs> um, and the bell work was find the weight of an object with a mass of 51 kilograms. You can, you can, I guess, rewind it and pause it to see what we did, and that that will help. I don't know. Um, we're going to talk today about let's call it. Your book titles these two lessons something different, but let's call this just for. Easiness. Mm. Sorry, I want to switch back to. I don't know. No. Um, let's call this. We talked about Newton's first law. What was it? Real briefly, in one word. What was Newton's first law? Inertia. 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 In one equation, what was Newton's second law? F equals law. What can you, can you reckon what we're going to talk about today? Third law. Uh, third law. Yeah. Newton's third law. Oh. Let's, let's list the other thing we're talking about. Gravity, projectile motion, and momentum. Okay, now, for one thing, this is going to be a, hopefully, shorter than 20 minute video. And we're going to talk about these three things, and each of these topics, each of these topics is something that we spend probably at least one, and for many of them, two weeks talking about in physics. So we're just this is going to be a um, surface level rundown of what these things are. Okay, we're gonna it's going to be basically definitional. Like we're just basically going to define what these are, and then worry about the in-depth stuff a little bit later. Yes. What's that last word? Momentum. 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 <coughs> um, let's start with Newton's third law. Your book. That's lesson three in your book. The other things are from lesson two in your book. Um, no, momentum's not. So we're going to talk about uh, Newton's third law first. So we had Newton's first law, Newton's laws. Okay, we, we named them this after the the cookie with the nasty fig filling, <coughs> right? No, we don't name them after the cookie with the nasty fig filling. You know what I'm talking about, though? This no. is a dated reference for you, even though they still exist. Have you ever had a fig Newton? Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're all right. If, if there's nothing else to eat, I'll eat one, but they're not great. Um, but that, that's not what this is. Named. These are after what or whom? That guy. Isaac Newton. Yeah, that Sir is. Sir Isaac Newton, who was a human being. That one dude who got hurt by an apple because he's so weak. Um, he, had, he had flaws like all of us do justice. Um, but he was, he was alive in the 17th century during the what's called the... Renaissance, that were sometimes called the Enlightenment. So he he was one of the people who he had a lot of crazy ideas too. Uh, he in in one of our videos that we watched in physics, it says if we're talking about his equation that he made up, f equals m a. If he had only contributed that to physics, we would remember him. We call that Newton's law, and we would remember him forever. But he did a bajillion other things. He did all three of obviously Newton's laws. Um, he invented the calculus, a whole separate field of mathematics. He invented, and, I um, hate him. and he had he had a uh, gajillion like he okay he had like let's say hundreds of good ideas that we still use very commonly. In fact, one of the things, the minor things, he he uh, invented the something called the spring constant that we can use to measure the force exerted by a spring. He did stuff with harmonic motion that we still use today. And all that stuff that seems kind of minor, we would still use even if he didn't invent all this other crazy stuff. But he had like a hun hundreds of good ideas, we'll say. And he had maybe thousands of kind of off-the-wall esoteric ideas about numerology, which is where you try to use numbers to tell your future. About astrology, which is where you try to use the stars to tell your future. He had a lot of crazy ideas, too. So he's not perfect, but he was knighted, Sir Isaac Newton. And he lived in the 17th century in England and these are his laws. The first one, just one word again. Inertia. <clears throat> inertia. Now say it. We're not going to write it down again, but say it. Inertia. No, but say the say the law itself. Mm -hmm. And an object in motion will stay in motion until I act on the Yeah. And, and an object at rest will stay in stay at rest, etc. Yeah. The second law was um, F, F equals M A. F equals M A. Which was say it. Say it a little louder, Jaden, so the microphone will pick you up. The acceleration of an object in the same direction as the net force on the object and the acceleration can be calculated from the Yeah, the acceleration of an object acts in the same direction as the net force. Really, if we're being specific, we should have F sub net there. The acceleration of an object is equal to the net force acting on the object. 
And now the third law, you've heard it before. If I say for every, you can tell me the rest probably. For every action, there's an equal yep. and opposite reaction. This the phrasing of this is uh, something we're really familiar with in our daily usage. Maybe not daily, but in our monthly or yearly usage, depending on who we are. This appeals to us metaphorically because it, it kind of, once again metaphorically, relates to the golden rule. What's the golden rule? You heard it. Treat others the way you want Yeah, right. So this is kind of like, we could, metaphorically, this is not what Newton is talking about, but on a socio-emotional level, we can think about this kind of like the golden rule. <coughs> If, 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 I, if, I, if I microwave Rhett's hamster, he might shoot my dog with a BB gun, right? Oh, there, there, for there's an equal and opposite reaction, right? It would be overkill if, if uh, my dog pees on Rhett's lawn and he runs me over with a riding lawnmower. That would, that would be disproportionate, right? That wouldn't be an equal and opposite reaction. But we're, we're used to this because we use it on a socio-emotional level, like I say. But it has real physical, and we're going to talk obviously more about the physical, since it's physical science, we're not about the physical reality of this as opposed to the socio-emotional one. Do you see what I'm saying, though? So we use this metaphorically, but we're also going to use it in a real sense uh, physically. <clears throat> Every single action, what, what does action relate to in physics? What are we talking about here? Motion. No. Force. Force. For every force, there is an equal and opposite reaction, which is a also a force. force. This will be different. We are going to diagram this, but one thing we need to make extremely clear is that unlike the free body diagrams, what we did with, the, um, like for instance, terminal velocity, when we were drawing a free body diagram, which is one thing, a barrel, that has some stuff acting on. What, what force is acting down on the barrel? Right. Gravity. Gravity is acting on F sub G, or weight. They're the same. What is acting up on the barrel? Probably. Oh, whatever's okay, it, depending on if it's falling or if it's sitting on the floor. I'm going to say, I'm going to pretend it's sitting on the floor. Normal the normal force, to the same amount, right? We're going to say this barrel has balanced forces acting on it. We're used to this. That's a free body diagram. We've diagrammed the forces acting on it. In this case, they happen to be the net force equals what? Zero. Zero. Is it accelerating? No. No, we've been over all that before. But now differently from that, when we do Newton's third law, make this real clear, write this down somewhere, involves two objects or more. It's and well, what might we call it? when two things are one's acting and the other is reacting? We might call the behavior between them and a or an. If if if, if I'm acting towards Cyrus vocally, if I'm speaking to Cyrus and he's reacting vocally, we are having a oh, okay. yes, but we might also say that we're having a, no, not necessarily anger. <laughs> yes, exactly. Thank you, John. Say it louder so the microphone can go. Interaction. Inter meaning, I, I ran into real trouble with this the other day when I did this exact same thing for chemistry too. Inter meaning what? The interstate is the is the Entry. is the highway that travels what states? Across. across. Yeah, across or I was going to use a different word. Um, Through. Yeah, these are all fine. I didn't think about those. I'm going to say between. So it's acting. It's it's the interstate state is a highway that travels between states. Um, the intercellular space is the space between cells. The internet is the network between computers. Interaction is the actions between the yeah the actions between the objects <laughs> between the objects. The classic example. I'm going to do it now. If I push on the wall, what? The wall push on the back. wall pushes back. There are two objects in this interaction. What are they? Wall and you. Sorry, I drew myself much too thin. I'm going to have to start over. That's better. There we oh, go. that is one fat Mr. Kind of motor. Okay. I got my hand up like this, too. <laughs> I think I'm at the rodeo. I'm, I'm riding this like a pony. Anyway, okay, I'm pushing on the wall, right? Yes, yes. Okay, so there's one force. What On what is that force acting? Where would I, if I'm doing a free body diagram, where should I draw that force? That way, or like, I guess. Say it again. Someone said it right thing, right thing over there. Where would I, if I'm pushing on the wall, where do I draw that force? Your hand in the direction. <coughs> yeah, but what's it acting on? The wall. The wall. So the wall has a force acting on it. What is the force? You. 
Uh, yeah, the push. push. My push force. That's it. That's the only thing that's happening, right? No. No. What else must be happening because of Newton's third law? It's also pushing. It's also pushing back on me. I think the force, the push force. It look, it's the same, but in opposite directions. Okay, let's let's write that. Forces that are part of a force pair. Let me use that word, but it means the same thing as an interaction. A force pair. What's pair mean? The two. 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 Yeah, two things. Pair of pants. Two pants. That's my great example because it's one object. Two socks. A uh, pair of socks is two socks. Forces that are part of a force pair are equal in magnitude <coughs> and opposite in direction. Vector. Vectors. They are vectors, yes. <laughs> now, what do you notice? Do these two forces balance? Don't be careful before you answer. Do these two forces balance? No. No! Let's write that down in big letters. These do not, I'm going to be, we use the word balance, they don't balance, but we are going to specifically put they do not cancel each other out. Why? I, the, if you can answer this question correctly, no, that's not it. That's how you're going to get there. If you can answer this correctly without me having to tell it to you, then you are the best no, then this is the, in this case, you are the best physical science class ever. No one's ever gone this right. Wait, 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 why wait. are these, why do these not cancel out? Because there's still other forces acting on them. Like gravity. Okay, hold up. Yeah, so maybe that's true, and it is true. There are still forces acting on each of these objects, but why does this, why does this force not cancel with this force? Because they're not the same force. They, they are part of the same interaction. You're right, they're not the same force. Mm, this one has different directions, and they're canceling out. What's different about these? What, look, even at the drawing, what's different about this barrel with it's two forces down. acting on it? Oh, it's only one object. Okay, yeah, this is only one object, and therefore I kind of led you in, so what is it? These do not cancel because what? They're two different objects. Yeah, because they act on separate, spell separate correctly, please, S-E-P-A-R-A-T-E -E objects. This is by far the most important thing for us to realize about Newton's Third Laws because it's the thing that people get wrong all the dang time. Write it down, please. That's so important for you to write this down. These do not cancel. What these being the forces do not cancel because they are acting on separate objects. They can't cancel out because they act on separate objects. Jesus, my God. Now, in this case, BT, BT way, um, by the way, you guys know about lingo. Um, these, these actually are balanced forces, but they're balanced by other forces. If, if I push on this wall, what's making it so the wall doesn't fall over? The wall. Yeah, there's some, there's some probably mostly friction, but there's some support force counteracting. Right, you know, the wall's like, I assume glued to ceiling up there and glued to the floor. I don't think that's how construction actually works. At least I hope it's not. They just got the glue stick out and they're like, let's put this wall up. No, the wall's affixed somehow at the top and the bottom, and it's probably supported by, I know it's bricks on the other side, which are all stuck together. So the wall is not falling down when I push on it because there's some support force. Why am I not moving away from the wall when I push on it? Because it's not pushing. There's no force. Because as much as you push, it will push, so it's not going to It's push pushing back, but it might. What, it, what, what can I do? What can I change about what I'm wearing to make it so that if I push on this, I fall over? Uh, slide shoes. Yes, if I wear shoes that have less friction. friction. So friction is what's balancing me here. The force of friction. Also, if I push a little bit harder, I can make it so my motion. Oh man, these shoes are really great. If I take my shoes off, there we go. Oh, I can push hard enough that I can eventually look at look at movement while my hands moving for one thing. But but see, if I reduce the friction, then my force is no longer balanced. I can push with this. So me pushing this way on the wall, pushing that way to my right on the wall, is making me go left. What sense does that make? Well, it only makes sense if we use Newton's third law. The wall's pushing me back is what's happening, right? And if I reduce the first force of friction, then the push force the wall is giving me is stronger. Oh, what? Oh, yeah. Because push and stuff. Is that kind of like how the ball bounces? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I have a ball. That's not why I brought this up here. Maybe you thought it was, and that's why you were like, you missed out on this ball thing. Um, but if, if I drop the ball, and it, it bounces back up. It's not because the 
ball did something. It's because the floor, the ball scooched out. If we look at it in slow-mo, it looks like this. The ball almost lands, and then when the ball does land, it like scooshes out. And then, since it's applying that force to the floor, the floor applies that force back, and then the ball goes and bounces right back up. Yeah, like, That's like when you throw you a ball want, like really hard, like the ball goes like you know, an old Yeah, well, we're not worried about the fork right now, but which is what you're doing. If you take the shock and put right up hamster inside, it will bounce. No. <laughs> okay, um, let's, I'm going to write, you have questions about Newton's third law. This is exceedingly important that you know this. Even though I just drew out of you that this is the truth, someone's also going to get it wrong with the test. Please try to remember this. It is kind of tricky. Well, I guarantee you, I, in fact, I know, I wrote the test. I've given this test for eight years now. One of the questions on the back, which is worth five points, is explain why the forces in a force pair do not cancel. And you're going to put, because they act on, they act on separate objects. objects. What, actually? They, they act on separate objects. Okay, let's move on to another thing. Let's define momentum real quick. That's, uh, as I said, um, so Newton's third law, we went obviously a little bit in depth into it, but for momentum and projectile motion, we're going to just kind of give definitions. We're going to give a couple examples for projectile motion. Um, and then for gravity, we're going to talk quite a bit about it. So let's move on to, to momentum next. Just so that even though we've done them in your book, lesson three and then lesson two, at least the lesson three stuff will be together. So momentum. I'm going to define momentum. Well, first of all, let's think about um, you have your book has an equation for momentum. P, lowercase p is momentum, equals m v. P is momentum. We're going to talk about what is measured in a second. M is mass. V is velocity. Mass is measured in kilograms. kilograms. Velocity is measured in meters per second. Meters per second. I was waiting for someone to say squared, but it's not meters per second squared. Just meters per second. So then what would momentum be measured in? Well, mass times velocity is momentum. Kilograms times meters per second is? Um, newtons. Newtons. Kilogram times meters per second. Oh, good. It's just because, remember, kilogram times meter per second squared is newtons. But uh, momentum is just kilogram times meters per second. Sometimes we even, sometimes, I see this quite a bit less frequently, but sometimes you write as newton times seconds. Which remember, a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. So if we multiply that by seconds, obviously one of the seconds drops out and we're left with just this. So you can write it either way. This is the one I see more frequently. Here's an easy question. <coughs> What does momentum depend on? Acceleration. No. Well, okay. I thought it was an easy question. What does momentum mass. depend on? Mass and force. Velocity. Oh. Mass and velocity. Momentum we can kind of think of as related to inertia. Obviously, obviously, inertia is mass. Remember, inertia depends only on mass. But momentum also depends on velocity. So instead of inertia, which was how lazy an object is, if, it, if it's staying still, it wants to stay staying still. And if it's moving, it wants to stay moving. Momentum is specifically how difficult it is to stop a moving object. Why do I have to specify moving object in this one? Because it also depends on velocity. What if the velocity is zero? What's its momentum? By, by mathematical necessity, what must the momentum be? Zero. It must be zero. Sorry, P should have an arrow over it too. Um, yeah, if the velocity of something is zero, then its momentum is also zero. Which has, which has more momentum? Uh, Angie running around the track or Angie walking around the track? Uh, running, because her velocity is great. Which has more momentum? Angie running around the track at 10 miles an hour or a semi-truck going at 10 miles an hour? Semi the semi-truck because it has more yeah. mass. Which has more momentum? A semi-truck parked in the parking lot or Angie walking around the track? Angie walking around the track. Right, because the semi-truck's velocity is zero. Which, now, which has more inertia of those two things? The, the semi-truck because it has more mass. Inertia depends only on mass. Momentum depends on mass and velocity. Okay? Mm -hmm. 
We can also, there's a, another way to calculate force, um, which I'm just going to write down for you. Force equals P1 minus P0, or sorry, let's do PF, what? over T. Why not? What are you talking about? This is. No, what do you mean? It just why do that way? It's so much simpler. What is the other way we could do it? Uh, P equals no. Um, that doesn't have all these things. It doesn't have force over time. What's up? Really? So what is the other way we can calculate force? Uh, mass times mass times acceleration. acceleration. In fact, if you look at the numbers, kilogram times meter per second, which is momentum, divided by second is kilogram times meter per second squared, which gives us newtons. It, the reason we, I bring this up one up, I, we, we very rarely, sometimes, when we get into physics, we will use this one to calculate force. It just depends on what you have or what you're given, I guess. Um, but the reason this one I like is because this is the way Newton didn't, he eventually used F equals MA. He did, invented F equals MA. But this is the, what he originally wrote as the way to calculate force in his text, Principia Mathematica, that he wrote in Latin when he published all this. He defined force as the change in momentum divided by time. So this would be, remember, remember this is the same as delta V. Remember we had, when we did delta V, it was V sub F minus V sub naught. So this is the same as delta P over T. Anyway, um, and what's neat about this is this gets very close to the calculus. Um, that's why he invented the calculus was to do this. If we have, you'll see in calculus, you'll take calculus, right? Yeah. Okay. Usually in calculus we write dx dt is how we tell that we're going to be doing calculus with something. That the little d just takes the place of delta because in math they don't like Greek. In science we like Greek. In math they like mm -hmm. Latin math. symbols or crazy symbols like the integral sign, which we're not going to talk about other than that I drew it. Just to show you that I'm smart. I'm not college educated though. Barely. Okay, you saw where I went to college for trying out that. Okay, um, let's write down one more thing for this and then we're going to move on to projectile motion and gravity. So let's write the law of conservation of momentum. You remember from last year we talked about some other laws of conservation of, what was it? You remember any? Last year in eighth grade science, we talked about the law of conservation of? Law of conservation of momentum. Mm -mm. There, there are two other conservation laws. The law of conservation of mass um, and the law of conservation of angular momentum. Those are the three conservation laws that govern the entire universe. What's a, what's a law in physics? You remember from the beginning of the year? I forgot. Uh, it's, basically like it's, a, it's a rule. It describes how something is all the time. Every single time we've observed this, it is this way. You um, can't just start floating. But it doesn't do what? This is different from a theory in that this does not... prove it. Mm, well, we can never prove anything. It hasn't never been disproven. But the... What's different from a theory, because a theory does what? Whereas the law is just describing how something is all the time. A theory... So explains. Explaining it. A theory explains something in depth. Like, this is why it works. The law is just describing this does work every time. Basically, um, Momentum is transferred without loss from one object to another. You say that again. Momentum is transferred without loss from one object to another. <clears throat> and remember, moment, momentum is made of mass and velocity. So if I, uh, if I throw, if I am a very good shot with my golf ball, and I hit, a, if I hit my golf ball, and it sails 250 yards, like it usually does, and it goes exactly where I want it to go, and it hits a bowling ball on a, on a little piece of very smooth surface, is the bowling ball going to start moving with the same velocity my golf ball had? No. Why? Because the bowling ball has more mass. So the momentum will be transferred the same, yeah. but same momentum, my small but very fast golf ball is going to transfer only a little bit of velocity to the very massive bowling ball, right? Same momentum. What's going to happen if I do that on grass? Is the, is the bowling ball... Why? Barely. Because did the, the momentum vanish? I thought, mo I thought momentum is transferred without loss. So where did it... Because of friction. So in that case... 
the, the law of conservation momentum is still true. It's just that the motion is being transferred not to the bowling ball, but to the little atoms that make it up and that make the grass up, making them tiny, tiny, tiny bit warmer, right? The atoms are moving a little bit faster, and so it gets a tiny bit warmer, and we call that friction. Friction. So this is always true. Usually in the real world, some of it we would say is lost due to friction, but that's not true. It's not really lost. It's just being transferred to the atoms instead of to the macro object, the big thing. Questions about that? I made a gross noise with my nose, but you know you have questions? Okay, we don't have time to talk about this or this. I did say we're going to talk about them after, which is true. It's just the after is going to be Wednesday and not later on. Do you have questions about Newton's third law or momentum? None? Okay, I can anticipate all of you getting a 100% on your test then. I mean, maybe not Jane, but yeah. Okay. <laughs>